now I have some pretty exciting things for this uh, stream. Let's see. This see that? Okay. We got some equilibrium today. So half of these, I usually write my own questions, but this time, according to the person that manages me, she said that some of the questions are like stuff you guys haven't covered yet, like torques. It's kind of sad because torques are pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Oh, I don't know how to like zoom in to like, oh, shucks. Okay, looks like you guys got to deal with this screen size. Let's see if I can make it a little bit nicer. Ooh, okay, hold on a minute. Let me, let me, let me just adjust the size so it's not like ugly looking. Okay, I think that's good. So let's start with this problem. Okay, car drives down a 25 degree incline at a constant rate of speed. Uh, the force of friction keeping the car from accelerating is 503 newtons. Find the weight of the car and the normal force. The tricky thing about this question is that in your head, you can like imagine this situation happening, right? You got you got an incline and you got a car, right? You, you just you just chill in there and you you just roll it acting downwards. And yes, that is true, but. If it's going at a constant speed, if it's going at the same rate, then that means all of the forces are balanced. So this would be equivalent to the car on an incline and the car completely stationary. Right? And you, you can think about this in real life. Like if you're driving, I'm not sure if you guys drive yet. Uh, I'll be completely honest. I still don't drive, but when you press the gas and let it go, you kind of coast, right? And when you're coasting, you're not applying any additional force, but you're still in motion and you're still taking the momentum from your initial acceleration and continuing it with it. So just because you're in motion doesn't necessarily mean that there's an acceleration being applied, or I mean a force being applied. The only time you understand that a force is being applied is when it's accelerating or becoming faster than what it was before. And that's just not directly intuitive to like everyday life, but I'll, I'll continue with this content. Okay. So got a 25 degree incline. Okay, 25 degrees. And you can simulate this as a, this block as a car. I'm too lazy to drive it, draw it again. Okay. The force of friction keeping the car from accelerating is 503 newtons. So usually it would accelerate downwards, right? But the force of friction always counteracts the, the direction of motion. So it's actually going upwards 503 newtons, right? Okay. So we just got to find if this is at equilibrium because there's no acceleration. So we can imagine this as a stationary block. And that implies that all of the forces are balanced. And currently, there's a lot of forces going on here. Right? There's this downward force called the mass times gravity, which is just the weight of the block. You have normal force right? Uh, that, that kind of counteracts this mass times gravity. And because like this normal force isn't quite like balances out. It has a little bit of a downwards acceleration. So you can imagine that this triangle, this, this line kind of extends down here and this line kind of extends down here. You got your good old 90 degree right triangle, which is what you always want when you look at these types of questions. But I'll also go over a shortcut that I learned in college for doing these questions. So like, if you really hate drawing those triangles, 
you don't really need to draw them if you conceptually understand what cosine and sine mean. Okay, so I'm going to go over the shortcut to doing this type of problem to find out whether or not this is cosine or this is sine or, or this is sine or this is cosine. And I'll give you a spoiler. This is sine, this is cosine. But, okay. I'll, I'll go over the trick really quick. I went over it last week, but uh, I think it's still useful. And I, I, the way I explained it last week was kind of bad, right? So we have two situations, right? So this is where the angle, angle theta, so this angle theta is equal to zero, and this theta is equal to 90, right? So let's say you're trying to calculate uh, like the normal force, right? So when it's in this, this uh, arrangement, the normal force is going to be equal to the weight, right? So we know that the normal force is going to be mg something theta, right? But clearly this, because mg is equal to normal force, we know that this value, OK, hold on, hold on. This value must be 1. So we know that some trig function something some trick function, if you input zero, it comes out one. And the only function that does that is cosine. So cosine zero is equal to one. So normal force is equal to mg, right? This situation, this is a complete 90 degree, right? There is no normal force, and this is just going to experience straight acceleration down in the form of mg, and there is absolutely no normal force. So we know that we want to calculate normal force, and there's something here. And when you input zero, it pops out zero. And this is once again cosine. So when you want to find the normal force, you use mg cosine theta, right? And you can apply this exact same idea with this angle, right, sine. So when you're trying to accelerate this way, when you're in this configuration, this has zero. Uh, perpendicular velocity. So this is going to be sine. And this one has like almost completely, oh, this is, this is new. This is normal force. I made a mistake there, but this is completely accelerating downwards. So once again, mg sine theta. But that, that's a really quick crash course. It's a, sh it's a really nice shortcut because like, I feel like teachers expect you to always draw force diagrams. And that can be annoying, especially with these triangle problems, because it just gets so convoluted. Like, there's just too many angles sometimes. Like, just just forget about the triangles and just just use your brain. <laughs> like, it, it's pretty simple, I think. Anyway, so we know that this force going this way, we know we know that it needs to balance out 503 newtons, right? So we need we need to find this that is equal to 503 newtons and that is equal to mg sine theta right and that's pretty simple you just go plug and chug 503 newtons is equal to mass which is okay i guess it's trying to find the weight if it's trying to find the weight we can just keep it in mass times gravity because the weight is always in newtons weight is a force sine 25 Okay, uh, let me, I always use my computer calculator because my TI is dead. Okay, so 1190 newtons, 1190.19, 1190.2. And that implies that the mass is going to be about like, it's about one uh, 20 kilograms ish. It's a pretty light car. You know, these types of questions aren't always like, super realistic. Like, if it's not accelerating at 503 newtons, you can tell that this is not a heavy car. Okay, so we got another problem here. 
We got a 150 kilogram light. Let's draw this. Suspended by two cables. One cable makes an angle of 65 degrees. Oh, I think I misordered these questions. Let's start with the easier one first. No, number three is easier. Okay. So a 570 Newton tightrope walker stands at the center of the tightrope so that each half of the rope makes an angle of 10 degrees. So I know that the degree sign is kind of weird here with the horizontal. What is the tension in each half of the tightrope? So let's draw this right here. In my head, this is what it looks like, right? You got your dude. He's like, hey, I'm on a tightrope. Pretty happy about it. Pretty excited. And then you have, ooh, I have colors. I should utilize it. Okay. 10 degrees with the horizontal. That implies that this guy is 10 degrees. This guy, ooh. My drawing isn't like the best. 10 degrees. Okay, let's use another color. So, why is it? This is 10. This is 10. Okay. So, in order for things to be at equilibrium, right? Oh, hold on. Let me, let me get my colors back. So, in order for things to be at equilibrium, you need all forces in the x direction to be equal to zero and all the forces in the y direction to be equal to zero because otherwise it would be in motion right like if it were completely still and you were to apply a force to it of course it will start moving and that implies it's not at equilibrium and if you get more advanced you also need to find that the moment or like the torques is also equal to zero and that is when it's truly at equilibrium i think actually i'm not completely sure i haven't like gotten that advanced but we'll we'll do moments slash torques in just a moment at the very end. Okay. So we know that. Okay. Here's a really quick trick. Once you see that this it's half of the rope. Uh, so if this person stands directly in the middle, that implies that this tension is the exact same thing as this tension, right? So let's, let's call this tension one, tension two, but because they're, this, they're the same, right? They experience the same amount of force. It's completely symmetric. We, let's just label both of these as just tension, right? Because they're, they're pretty much the same. Um, let me erase that. Give me a bigger size. Ooh, just kidding. Okay, but, but we know that the tensions are pretty much the same if you see a symmetrical problem. And at that point, you just immediately shortcut because this problem is actually extremely easy to solve. But, um, okay, so since we know that the sums of the forces in the y direction must be zero, we have uh, so zero, okay, forces of y equals zero is equal to, okay, let's try to find the force of the string in the y direction, right? So let's think about the extremes here. Um, this is gonna be sine. So tension, sine, theta, and there's two of them, right? So there's, this is from the left side. Oh. And then plus T sine theta, right side. And then this is pulling up, but there's a 570 Newton tightrope walker in the middle weighing it down. So you get a subtraction sign minus 570, right? Because this guy is pulling it up, this guy is pulling it up, whereas this guy is pulling it down. All right? We want that to be reflected inside the signs. Or else we can't solve this at all because like the directionality of these forces really do matter. Okay, so this is equal to two t, two t sine theta is equal to 570 Newtons. Okay, uh, two, okay. 
So that's just 285 divided by sine 10. Uh, divide by sine 10. So the tension is equal to 1641. Uh, Newtons, right? Okay, that that makes sense. Let me let's do a, do a check really quick. Uh, let me make sure that these things are right while I do it. Um. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, let's go to a little bit more complex of a problem. So we have a one hundred fifty kilogram light. Suspends on two cables. One cable makes an angle of 65 degrees at the horizontal. Uh, okay. Let's see. So this one, this one's a little bit steeper, and this one's like kind of more flat-ish. You got your little traffic light, right? 150 kilogram. That is a really heavy traffic light. One cable makes an angle of 65. Another angle 40 degrees, right? So, okay, let's, let's just draw the triangles here. Okay, so we got once again the forces in the x is equal to zero. Summation of forces in the y is equal to zero. And if you remember the last problem, I didn't need to really consider the net force in x, right? Because this person, right, does not create a force in the x direction. And if we know that this x direction is equal to that x direction, we already know it's an equilibrium, right? And I guess the only, I mean, you, you can't really get any information from that. You need to use a y force. But this guy is a little bit different, right? I mean, not really. I think I don't think you still need it, actually. So once again, we have the summation of forces in Y is equal to zero, which is equal to, let's call this T1, call this T2. T1, so this is pulling upwards, right? Be very conscious of the signs. T1 sine of 65 degrees plus T2 sine of 40 degrees minus 150 kilogram. Um, let me. Oh, it's kind of getting to the edge over there. Mm. 150 kilogram times 9.8, right? You see, there's two unknowns and one equation, right? Now that, that, that doesn't quite work out for us. So we, ha we can get another equation. So this guy's pulling this way, this guy's pulling that way. Uh, negative T1 cosine theta, cosine 65 plus T2 sine, oh, that's not looking too hot. 40 degrees is also equal to zero because that's the summation of the forces in the X direction. You guys, does this make sense to you guys? Like, I don't want to, like, be confusing. If you guys are confused by anything, just stop me because I, I know I can get a little bit carried away at times. Um, okay. So, hmm. so we have T2 sine 40 is equal to T1. Oh, wait, wait. What did I write? Why did I write sine there? That should be a cosine. Okay. T2 cosine theta cosine 40, right, is equal to T1 cosine 65, right? 
And now we know that uh, I wanna I'm gonna choose T1 because T1 is a nice even number. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put everything in terms of T1. Cosine 65 degrees divided by cosine 40 degrees is equal to T2. All right, so now we have a ratio and we can solve for everything in the first equation. So let's find cosine 65 divided by cosine 40. Uh, divide by cosine 40. Uh, 0.55. Mm, is, okay, so T1, 0 0.55 equal to T2, right? Okay. So let me... Oh, this is getting a little bit large. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but... Yeah, hopefully you guys can still see the work that I'm doing. Uh, yes. Cosine 65 divided by cosine 40. Is that right? Let me, let me plug it in again. I'm a little bit paranoid with these questions. Like, I feel like I'm doing everything right, but also wrong at the same time. Okay. So we got T1. Tension of 1 is equal to 0 0.55 of tension 2. So, f of y is equal to uh, 0, once again, equal to, let's plug in everything, t1. You just have regular old t1, sine 65, plus t2, which is just t1 times 0 0.55, because that's the ratio times sine 40, Minus, uh, it's just uh, let's run around 9.8 10 minus 1500 newtons, right? So 1500 newtons is equal to T1 0. Point, uh, that's T1 sine 65 plus 0. 0.55 sine 40. And you can do that really quick. Sine of 65 plus 0 0.55 times sine of 40, 1.26, 1190. Okay, so T1. T1 is equal to 1190 and once you newtons and once you multiply that by 0 0.55, 1190 times 0 0.55, 654, 0 0.5. Okay. So let's continue further. So this is starting to get into torque questions, right? And like equilibriums. Um, okay. So these ones you always want to draw a diagram for. Let's see how much I have left. Okay, I got three more. I'll, I'll spend 10 minutes on each, I guess. My friend and I are sitting on a seesaw, right? Ooh, that's an ugly seesaw. I weigh 125 pounds and my friend weighs 150 pounds. I'm sitting four feet away. So let's say this is four feet. From the pivot point. How far away? Okay, so that means... Fun fact about these torque questions. Okay, I'm not... First off, have you guys heard of torque before? Because I don't want to like jump into something too quick before making sure you guys know what I'm talking about. 
Anyway, I, I should go over it anyway. Torque is equal to force times radius, right? And the way that I kind of think about it is that like if you have a really long pole arm, right? Like once you like change a small angle of it, it has like a very large change in distance, right? Like if let's let's say you have um like one of those selfie sticks, right? Like if you if you tilt your arm up by like 10 degrees, it can like have this like huge difference in distance, right? And the other way can go like it can go the other way, right? You can have like you can use a lot of force and move it like a little bit of force and move it a long ways. And you can move something that has a lot of force but a small distance, right? It's kind of it's kind of this like balance of like forces and radii, right? So another way to describe torque is by the moment, right? And you got a pivot point, right? So Fun fact about pivot points, you don't really need to care about forces directed towards the pivot point. But you can imagine that even if all the net forces of y is equal to zero, so that's the initial condition of equilibrium we started out with here, right? Even if all the equilibrium forces in y is zero, does not necessarily mean equilibrium. Right, it could equal equilibrium in certain situations, but not all, right? So let's say that I have my, I don't know, 150 pound friend here. And there is, there's an upwards force of 275 pounds exerted, exerted by this pivot, right? Because the force in y direction is zero. But if you were to hold this constant, you would see that, oh, just realize I, I put it in equilibrium by accident. Um, I mean, it, it, you can apply the 275 force here, and you would see that this would start rotating in like this direction, right? It does not necessarily mean it's at equilibrium, even though all the forces together is zero. Okay, so that, that's saying that if this operates forces here. Um, so the way that you take force is that you have a pivot moment, right? not pivot moment, like a pivot location, and you calculate all the forces in that direction. So let's say that the moment in Y, let's say that this direction is positive, right? It's equal to zero, because that implies that it's not spinning. And if things are spinning, you definitely know it's not in equilibrium. And you, don't, you, you want things to be in equilibrium in these statics problems. So the, in the moment, oh, why did I put Y? Uh, the moment at the pivot point, moment at P is equal to zero, is equal to, so we know that this is going down, so this is pushing it clockwise, right? Is equal to 125 pounds times radius, four feet. And you might be noticing something weird. I'm using these customary, like, imperial units or whatever, and you're like, Wait, but we don't use those in physics. And let me tell you, in these torque questions, it doesn't matter because uh, it all balances out, right? Because these torque problems are mostly about the ratio of the distance and the mass. And as long as you maintain that ratio, it should be fine. Like, you, your result will obviously be in pounds, but it doesn't really matter. It's still going to work out. It's not like kinetic energy where you, you don't really have... I, I actually don't know, but... You don't have a unit for energy inside other uh, unit systems. But let's continue. So you got, so this guy is pushing you clockwise, right? And we define clockwise as positive. But this guy, if you imagine that from this pivot point, right, let's hold this point, like, let's have this point stable, but you push it down here. This entire thing starts rotating counterclockwise, right? And if it's rotating, rotating counterclockwise, we define that as negative. So minus 150 pounds. Uh, and then this, we're trying to find the distance, right? Times distance. Okay. 
So uh, we can we can just do some basic math. Five hundred is equal to one fifty distance, and distance is equal to five hundred over one fifty. Is I don't I don't want to pull up my calculator. Ten over three, right? Uh, three and one third, three point three 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 three. Yes. Okay, so this distance is three point three three feet. Okay. That's pretty good. Um, let's see. I'm sitting with a different friend. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else I want to cover here. That's basically it. Uh, I'm sitting with a different friend. I, once again, weigh 125 pounds, but this time I sit six feet away. Let's see. Let's get my brush out. Let's draw this. Ooh, I'm really bad at drawing these seesaws. Okay, got a pivot point. That looks like a subway sandwich. I don't like that at all, but... I'll keep to it. I weigh 125 pounds. All right, and I, I'm sitting over here, six feet away. My friend sits five feet away. Got my buddy here. All right, if you want to know how much does my friend weigh? Okay. So, we got the center pivot point. Um, then, we have... Let's take this moment. Calculus is positive. Moment. But the point, say this is positive, is equal to zero, is equal to... Okay, this guy is pushing down 125 libs times six feet. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's getting tight again. I, I wrote this way too big. I did, I did not need to write it that big. Okay, that's, I wrote that a little bit smaller. And then we got this guy also putting down, but if you imagine him pushing down here, this guy starts rotating the other way, counterclockwise. So it's negative minus his weight times five feet. All right? This is pretty simple. That means 125 times six is equal to five times weight. 125 divided by 5 is 25 times 6 is equal to weight. That's going to be 150 pounds. Yes. Was he 150 pounds in the last one? Gosh darn it. Yeah, he was. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one. The next one is a little bit more conceptual, right? And I kind of designed it to be that way. I have a massless bar that is one meter long. Okay, let's draw this bar. Oh, I'll use I'll use a triangle tool this time. Okay. okay. Ooh, stop that. So I have a massless bar. And that, that's gonna be a key word right now. Massless. Right? And gravity only affects things that have mass, right? Now, if you think about the force of gravity, mass times gravity, if there is mass zero, then the force of gravity is zero. Okay, so basically this guy, you can kind of imagine is in, in space, right? I exert a 20 Newton force on one end of the bar. Uh, I exert another force the same direction and magnitude as my first force, but on the other end of the bar, right? 
What will happen? So that implies that I have another 20 Newton force being applied here, right? Now let's take the moment about this point. Let's, let's say that you take, let's say that point is here, right? Let's calculate the moment, moment, okay. So that implies that this is 0 0.5. 0.5, right? Moment, let's see if this is in, indeed, in fact, in equilibrium in terms of moment, right? So moment about the point in the positive direction is clockwise. Okay, so if you imagine this pushing it, it would go counterclockwise, right? So 0 0.5 meters times 20 newtons, Okay, so you got this other guy. If you were to imagine only this guy pushing, this is trying to push it clockwise. Oh, I forgot to put the negative here. So this is going to be plus 0 0.5 times uh, 20 newtons. Okay, so when you, when you do 0 0.5 times 20 minus 0 0.5 times 20, that's going to equal 0. So yes, indeed, is it, it is an equilibrium and concern with the moment. But if you think about this bar in terms of the net force, okay, we can, we can also talk about net force in the x direction, right? It's equal to zero. And there, there's nothing, nothing moving this left or right. So net force, the x direction is zero. But you have a net force in the y direction, right? And that's equal to this 20 newton force plus this 20 newton force, right? So 20 newtons plus 20 newtons is equal to 40 newtons, right? If you want to be at equilibrium, because at equilibrium, some of the summation of forces in y direction should be zero, right? And you'd be like, wow, that's weird, because when I think about like when I have oh, like when I have like this pencil, right? Like I'm putting like the same force up here and up here at the same time, right? And you're like, wow, but this is at equilibrium. And something that you need to consider is that there is another mass that is pulling this guy downwards, and that's mass times gravity. So in this situation, if this pen were massless and I were to apply the same amount of force as I am right now to a massless pen this guy would be accelerating upwards. But because of the way that gravity works, that the normal force automatically reaches equilibrium with whatever force I'm applying to it. Okay, so in this situation, so in the situation in part A, uh, what was it? Forces in Y, not in equilibrium, but the moment, is at equilibrium, right? This time, we have a different situation over here. Okay. I, I drew this all the way too big. I like drawing things very large. That's the situation over here. Let's draw another situation. Okay, so we have this time I exert a force in the opposite direction, but with the same magnitude at the under, other end of the bar. So I still exert a 20 newton force here, but I exert a downwards 20 newtons here, right? And this guy is completely massless. And this, uh, this, this is very intuitive with like the real world, right? Like if you imagine that I have this pen and I exert upwards force here, exert downwards force here, it's not equilibrium, right? So this, this is something that's more reflective in real life. And even if you were to have mass in this pen, it would still accelerate downwards. But let me, let me just demonstrate why. Okay, so in this situation, you got the summation of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. It's just equal to, positive 20 on the right-hand side, 
minus 20 newtons on the left hand side because it's a downward force and you have you do and do you have equilibrium in terms of y forces right so this is an equilibrium check mark but you also have a moment right let's take the moment about here and it, it really doesn't matter where you take the moment if you take the moment about here take the moment about here take the moment about here it doesn't matter where you take the moment because it's ultimately going to be the same, right? Um, okay. So, okay, I, I shouldn't say that the moment is the same in all aspects. The moment is only the same at equilibrium. So that, that's probably something I should say carefully. But let's say that in the you put it in the middle, right? Moment about point positive direction right is equal to i shouldn't say zero quite yet but you say that clockwise is a positive direction but this is going opposing that so 20 newtons times 0 0.5 right minus 20 newtons is opposing it and you can imagine this guy he's also going counterclockwise so both of these guys are pushing this rod to go into clock counterclockwise rotation. And that is definitely not an equilibrium, right? So you got minus 20 newtons times 0 0.5 meters, meters. Okay, and then you see that this is indeed a moment of 20 newtons, negative 20 newtons in fact. And that is not an equilibrium. Okay. So we can extract a lot of information from this idea, right? So in these situations, we have two forces acting on a rod. But they're like, no matter how I point it, if I point them in the same direction or point them in opposite directions, like it's still not in equilibrium, right? And you, you can kind of extract that no matter how you angle it, unless they're pointed together, like not like pointing in the same direction, like they're directly pointing together as in they're causing like a tension or like, uh, what was it? A compression of a sort, which I, I, I'm pretty sure is somewhat irrelevant right now, but like, like, as long as you have two forces acting on a rod, there will never be an equilibrium, other than that one case where they're pointing in the same direction. Right? So you, you can kind of see it in these situations. Like, on this other end, like, as long as I point in any direction, it's still there's still going to be some sort of moment. And if there's not a moment, it's complemented by the force in the y direction. Right. So it doesn't really matter what you do in the situation. It is physically impossible to reach an equilibrium with only two forces acting on a bar. And that's just that's just a fact of life. And we just like demonstrated that right here. OK. So that's pretty much all I have for this week. It's pretty simple. Uh, I have more questions. OK. Let's see. Um, okay. Okay. Rush. I'm still on the seesaw and I still weigh 125 pounds. All right? I'm just draw another seesaw. I've discovered this rectangle tool. Very helpful. And we got, I also just now discovered this triangle tool. I will use to my advantage. Okay. Oof. Adding little black dots everywhere. Okay. Um, let's move this guy down here. I'm still on a seesaw. I still weigh 125 pounds. I brought two friends over, one weighs 120 and one weighs 150. I'm sitting six feet away from the pivot. Um, 
small. I'm sitting six feet away and my 150. This is me. Oh, wait, wait. I weigh. That's not 160 feet. That's six feet. Okay, six feet away, and I'm I'm just chilling here. Hanging out on my seesaw. And I weigh 125 pounds, right? But my buddy here, I my buddy who weighs 150 pounds sits three feet away. I got my other buddy. He's a little bit chonkier than me, but it's okay. I still love him. Uh he's 150. So I got a third buddy. He wants to join in on all the fun that we are having right now. And he's like, where do I sit to maintain this static equilibrium? And you got to be like, okay, then let's calculate the torque. So let me, let me just extend this. I, I keep on drawing too big and I keep on getting punished for it. And like, I still do the exact same mistake. Okay. So my buddy weighs, what was it? 120 pounds, right? We're taking this pivot point. Call this point P. Okay, let's take this moment. Moment P, positive direction, is equal to zero, which is equal to uh, 125 times six. Oof. Why do I why do I keep on writing so gosh darn big? I'm like being making a fool of myself right now. Okay. 125 times six. So that is pushing in the clockwise direction. This guy, when he's pull when he's chilling, it goes down. It's pushing the counterclockwise direction. Minus three times one hundred fifty. And we wanna we don't know whether or not he's going clockwise or counterclockwise, right? So let's just assume positive, right? Because if he does end up sitting on this side, the x direction will end up being negative. So let's say positive distance times, what was it? How much did he weigh? My buddy weighed 120. Okay. So I don't, I don't know whether or not he's going to sit on this side or that side, and that's why we got to check the torques. Right, so 125 times six is uh, 750? Yeah, 750. Is it 750? Yeah, it's 750. Minus 450 plus distance times 120 is equal to zero. And you got 300 is equal to D120. 300. Oh, negative D120. Sorry, you got to be very careful with the negatives in these situations. 120 equal to D. And D is equal to 30 over 12. It's equal to... Oh, I don't want to... I don't want to big brain this. I'm just going to... 2.5. Feet. Okay. I think that's all I can do this week. My battery is actually about to die on my laptop that I'm streaming from, but yeah, I hope that was helpful for you guys. Uh, come back next week with questions and problems. Yeah, you guys have fun. Hey, okay. I'm going to end the broadcast here if that's okay. So, later. Bye.